Hello and welcome to coverage of U.S. Nationals Maria Bartholdi in the booth alongside Jacob Van Loon and Jerry Thompson there on the right side of your screen on Teamer Energy, Benjamin Renato on Mardu Vehicles. Here we are in the semis. Jerry Thompson kicks things off. He's going to attune with some ether. You mentioned in this match uh, you think Mardu Vehicles pretty heavily favored. I don't know if I would quite say heavily, but I, I do think that Mardu Vehicles is the favorite. I think that a card like Hi Heart of Kieran is just really powerful, and the Team Energy decks aren't playing things like a Braid anymore. Harness Lightning is really the only efficient answer. Unlicensed Disintegration is really mana efficient, especially when it's able to kill a Glorybringer. It just feels like Mardu Vehicles is more efficient with its mana. Benjamin and Renato off to a running start here with a Bomat Courier. Jerry Thompson answers with a copy of Long Tusk Cub. Jerry, in his player interview, said he would be very excited to team with the quote-unquote dreamboat, Reed Duke. <laughs> Listed his occupation as Raptor Companion. <laughs> <laughs> Scrap Heap Scrounger here for Benjamin. Jerry has really uh, become quite the player over the last couple of years. He's always been so good, but uh, now with a Pro Tour win under his belt, after uh, making that appearance at the Magic Online a Championship, here in the top four of Nationals. Just some really impressive stuff from somebody who's been around for a really long time. Jerry Thompson swings in with the Long Tusk Cub, immediately adding a counter as well. Yeah, Jerry recognizes that uh, this match is likely going to be a race, and with Scrap Hoop Scrounger on the other side of the board, which cannot block, Jerry wants to deal as much damage as fast as possible before Benjamin really gets uh, all of his cogs in order. Werther Virtuoso added to the team for Jerry up to four energy. Jerry Thompson, a fan favorite, of course. Really nice guy. He's the best. The oh. best guy has been called. Yes. You can watch an episode of Enter the Battlefield <laughs> with Jerry as well, uh, which was previewed at the World Championship, talking about his Pro Tour win and how he donated... Uh, to Planned Parenthood, pretty good piece. You can check that out online. It's such an amazing thing. I wish others would have thought of it first, and I hope others will follow suit. <laughs> yeah, super, super generous of Jerry. Scrap Heap Scrounger enters the fray. Veteran motorist joining the team here for Benjamin, who's found all of his colors of mana as well. Yeah, it will leave open that black mana for Fatal Push, hoping that Jerry will uh, dump some additional energy into that Long Tusk Cub so that he can uh, get an even greater advantage by saving the Fatal Push to use it as an instant. So is Jerry's game plan here just to try and get out ahead faster than Mardu Vehicles for the win? I think racing is very important. Uh, the, one of the major reasons why racing is so important, though, is because Benjamin does usually win the air war. However, um, you know, with Jerry having access to these Thopters, that's not necessarily true. So Jerry could play a longer game and feel somewhat comfortable right now that he has Whirler Virtuoso in play. But I think that, especially given that he had the play and that he had his Long Tusk Cub on turn two, he's definitely incentivized to be racing with Benjamin here. There, and you can uh, get a peek there at Benjamin's hand. There's a Fatal Push and three lands. Rogue Refiner was a play there for Jerry and passes the turn back over to Benjamin. Manages to find an Ether Sphere Harvester. I want to ask a little bit about how, what this Mardu Vehicles deck looks like today versus how it looked like, you know, several months ago. I think the biggest addition is Hazard the Fervent. It's uh, an unbelievably powerful card, especially when you're playing a deck that's able to empty his hand as fast as a smartest vehicle strategy. And uh, when you're trying to be an aggressive strategy, there's nothing quite like Hazard the Fervent. Was a uh, Bomat Courier always on the team? Uh, no, definitely not. <laughs> what's uh, what's he joining for? So uh, Thraven Inspector, which was a huge part of the old Marty Vehicles deck, obviously not a part of the puzzle anymore, and uh, they need to find another one drop to replace it. The fact that Bomat Courier is an artifact means that it uh, turns on a lot of the cards that you need to be turned on, like Spire of Industry. And there's that Ether Sphere Harvester hitting the table for Benjamin Renato. 
Yeah, Pomat Cory are also with the one power. Similarly, crew wing cards like Ether Sphere Harvester. Another rogue refiner here for Jerry Thompson. And this is a very interesting situation because usually we're used to seeing decks like this in racing spots. Neither of these decks like to sit back. Uh, you see cards like Scrap Heap Scrounger on the table. But uh, here we have a uh, good old fashioned standoff. Yeah, Long Tusk Cub is the only creature that can attack in for Jerry Thompson. Seven energy at his disposal. Seeing Jerry Thompson now chose not to tango with that Long Tusk Cub when his opponent had open mana to uh, gain an advantage with Fatal Push. But here, no fear in sending it into the red zone, even with that Aether Sphere Harvester on the other side of the table. And we've seen Jerry T several times today just expertly play around any card that his opponent could have. Like not, not playing into something like Cast Out, for instance. Absolutely. Uh, something that Jerry's play there tells me is that he likely has a card like Harness Lightning or a Braid in his hand. Uh, by leaving that two open mana and attacking into the Aether Sphere Harvester, it's unlikely that he's doing that without any way to interact with his opponent. Pass the turn back over to Benjamin Renato on 13. As we said before, Jerry, very good guy. Long Tusk Cub, adorable pet. He's not <laughs> just going to send it into this dangerous fray without some sort of protection. Well done, Jerry. <laughs> Venner's Apprentice here for Benjamin Renato. Veteran Modus will crew up that Ether Sphere Harvester. Scrap Heap Scrounger also hitting the red zone. Yeah, Scrap Heap Scrounger doesn't do much besides attack. Bomat Courier getting in as well. Yeah, Bomat Courier mostly uh, looking to cash in for some extra cards here. I suppose this is a welcome addition. You know, we lost Thraben Inspector, which, of course, was a fantastic card. There is no doubt about that. Yeah. But the Bomag Courier, perhaps a nice replacement. I mean, being able to turn on cards that you want to turn on and also refilling your hand. Yeah, especially in the games where your opponent, uh, you know, is forced to block other things. Bomag Courier can get a little bit out of hand. And the Marty Vehicles does a good job of emptying its hand out, in which case Bomag Courier can, you know, provide a pretty huge advantage. It's also quite a bit easier on the mana than Inspector. Inspector was often very difficult to cast in the first turn. Fatal push and will take care of that long tusk cub from Jerry Thompson. Rogue Refiner blocks the courier, and uh, Benjamin will, in fact, cash that courier in for two cards. Thopter jumps in front of that Ether Sphere Harvester. And here we see that Harness Lightning that you were expecting from Jerry. Targeting the Harvester. And the Harvester had... Uh Six toughness, so Jerry going to have to cash in the, the majority of his energy there to take it down out of the sky. Worth it? Absolutely. Toolcraft Exemplar for Benjamin throws the turn back over to Jerry Thompson. Well, Jerry was able to deal with a flying threat there. How do you feel about uh, where he stands now in the game? Uh, he seems to be in a reasonable position. He's definitely ahead on cards. Uh, his creatures are matching up well in the current state of things. And because he has the Virtuoso on the battlefield, that means that all of the energy cards that he draws in the future are going to have pretty high value. Uh, the Marty Vehicles deck, as we see on the board, has cards like Veteran Motorist. Um, it has cards like Bomat Courier. These cards simply trade for Thopters. And uh, I really like Jerry's spot in this, this game right now. He's ahead on cards thanks to those Rogue Refiners, even after that Bomat Courier got traded in. Jerry, of course, innovating with some pretty interesting sideboard tech this weekend as well. We've uh, gotten to see it come out in some of the Tokens matchups, Lifecrafter's Bestiary. Yeah, I don't think that one's going to be coming in here, but here he will be very, very happy to pick up Appetite for the Unnatural. Jerry Thompson swinging in with the team, forcing Benjamin to make some decisions here. And I like getting aggressive in this spot. Why 
Why do you think Jerry chose this moment to attack? So he knows, uh, based on what Benjamin has in play, that you know Benjamin is going to have to what is it, is incentivized to not block here to try to attack him back for a whole bunch of damage. And if he has something powerful in his hand that he can swing the game with, he can kind of bait Benjamin into not blocking with anything and then being dead to two attacks. Here we see the apprentice blocking a rogue refiner. Magma Spray will exile that Scrap Heap Scrounger from Benjamin. Yeah, now Benjamin doesn't even have an artifact in play. So that means that the Inventor's Apprentice is not even big enough to trade. The Toolcraft Exemplar, no longer an impressive body. And with that extra Whirler Virtuoso, Jerry has plenty of blockers to just deal with Renato's entire board. All right, he's just going to scoop him up there. Jerry Thompson taking game one in the semis here at U.S. Nationals over Benjamin Renato, Teamer Energy over Mardu Vehicles. Players will get a chance to head to their sideboards here. Well, we take a live look in at Oliver versus Peter. White-blue approach versus blue-black control. And there is Gideon on the table for, Pita, for Peter. And with that emblem on the battlefield, there's no way he can lose the game. As long as the <laughs> Planeswalker's in play. <laughs> and you believe uh, White-Blue Approach to be pretty heavily uh, favored in this matchup? Yeah, I think White-Blue Approach is a, a huge favorite against the Blue-Black Control deck. Uh, one of the major reasons is that Blue-Black Control is playing a ton of cards that are designed to kill the opponent's creatures and our Planeswalkers, and those cards are really weak against a deck like Blue-White Approach that doesn't rely on cards like that to get to victory. All right, we're going to see a Vraska's Contempt cast off of this Torrential Gear Hulk here to deal with the Skidian of the Trials. Two, two Approach of the Second Sons in hand. For yeah. Villa Rubia. You only have to resolve the second one. That's right. Full grip of cards for Peter as well. You know, it's interesting if he has... Uh, I like this prayer from Peter because... If you haven't already attempted to cast one approach of the second sun, then you don't really want to pick that fight on your opponent's end step just yet. He has plenty of time to do that. Ether Meltdown here. We'll shrink down this Gear Hulk and a Glimmer of Genius follow up play for Villa Rubia. Finds a couple of lands. Yeah, after putting a couple <laughs> lands on the bottom. Yep. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> all you find is lands. Escan to the Sunken Rune is flipped and in play for Peter as well. So this game has already been going on for quite some time, as also evidenced by the number of lands these players have in play. Pull from tomorrow here. Yeah, I don't know if he really wants to cast pull from tomorrow. I guess he could just fill his hand up with counter magic and hit a whole bunch of land drops and eventually win the game doing so. You know, we talked about this earlier, about these uh, control mirrors, kind of not necessarily mirrors, but control matches going, going pretty long and players uh, starting to count their libraries. There we saw the first approach. Meanwhile, Torrential Gear Hulk, a very small Gear Hulk, <laughs> will attack. Getting in for one at a time. All right, we're going to take this approach, put it into my hand. <laughs> and we're going to see some milling here. Ipnu Rivulet. There's a look. 
One in a blue tap, sacrifice a desert target player, puts the top four cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. And I like that play a lot from Oliver there. Uh, he knows that there are only so many cards in Peter's deck that he cares about, those cards being Approach of the Second Son. He needs to uh, get those out of his opponent's deck, and he knew that there was one in the top three cards, so he was able to use the Ipnu Rivulet, uh, mill the top four cards of Peter's library, and now there are only so many Approach of the Second Sons that he really needs to worry about. Disallow takes care of this approach cast by Peter. Taking a look through his library again, finds a sensor. <laughs> Oliver taking a look through Peter's graveyard. Just how many approaches have I managed to deal with? <laughs> two. Right. So I've dealt with two. Means there are two more somewhere. Another Ibnu Rivulet also is still in play for Oliver. Seems like Peter also has some Ibnu Rivulets of his own. Those could come into play here. Seems like Oliver does have a lot of counter magic, so it might be difficult for uh, Peter to resolve his second copy of Approach here. And milling something that's on the mind of both of these players, as well as we are deep into this first game. Untimed matches here in the top eight. So that's not something they need to worry about. They still have to play at a reasonable pace. But Peter, it looks like, still has a significant number of cards left in the library. So uh, a card probably falling off the top of the library when uh, Escanto was activated. Peter also taking a look through Oliver's graveyard here. <laughs> Let's just trade graveyards, see what each of us has got going on and what we need to worry about our opponents still having. And it looks like Oliver only has one piece of counter magic left. So if Peter were to just go for it here with counter magic backup, he would win the game. Wow. Yeah, Oliver, they're holding cards like Essence Extraction. Ooh. Yeah, those those aren't what you bush. want. Yeah. Just stone cold dead. Yeah, tons of cards that don't do anything. And that's one of the reasons why Blue White Approach is so heavily favored in the first game here. I just want to take a moment to see uh, if Peter decides to go for it here. Does he have the gumption? <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe, is he brave enough? Is he reckless enough? I mean, one of the thoughts that must, must be going through his head is that a lot of Oliver's cards are just dead against him here. And while he does have a lot in his hand, there's a lot in the graveyard as well. Yeah, he's seen Oliver's deck list. He knows that there's only two Despates left in Oliver's deck. Does Oliver have both of them in his hand? What if he only has one? Then I'll get him. Yeah, those, those four disallows are the only hard counters in Oliver's deck. Wow. And two of them in his graveyard. One in his hand, one in his library. Peter can just go for it here and win the game. Oh, Peter's oh. just going to pass the turn. All right, we're going to go back to our main match here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is underway. Jerry Thompson versus... Benjamin Renato. And here we go. Jerry Thompson currently up a game. Beaumat Courier getting in here for Renato. Yeah, this one's going to be a lot harder for Jerry because Benjamin gets to be on the play here in the second game. And when Martyr Vehicles is on the play and draws well, I mean, you've experienced it. It's just... Yep. It's not really very interactive a lot of the time. <laughs> you see that Heart of Kieran, by the way, in Renato's graveyard... It was spell-pierced by Jerry Thompson. Wow. 
which is just great. Oh, man. This looks like a really good Bomat Courier for what it's worth. <laughs> it certainly does. Scrappy scrounger here for Renato. Courier uh, hits red zone once again. Building up a resource for him to cash in later in the game. This Mardu deck would likely be thrilled to play against either of those control decks in oh the yeah? finals. Oh, man. Scroungers. Tons of vehicles. Glory bringer for Jerry Thompson. Attacks and exerts, targets the courier. Looks like Benjamin just has a pair of fatal pushes in hand. They don't do that much. Would he rather have the three random cards underneath the courier? He would. He would. Let's see what he finds. Oh, all action. Yeah. Takes four. Yeah, that was a pretty good cash in under that courier. <laughs> yes, it was. Hazret, one of the cards, I believe. Veteran motorist. Ether Sphere Harvester and a harsh mentor. And he just wants to empty his hand as fast as possible here. Here comes the motorist, Jerry Thompson, by the way, on 11. Let's take a look. One of those cards, I believe, on License Disintegration on the top of uh, Renato's deck. Wow. It's a really powerful card. That's, you know, one of the biggest incentives to playing the Marty Vehicle stack is that you get to play an unlicensed integration that's dealing the opponent damage. All right, they're both staying on top. Jerry can't like that at all. And here comes the Harsh Mentor. Yeah, Harsh Mentor doing a very good job of uh, punishing people for playing with cards like Whirler Virtuoso, Long Test Cub, and Bristling Hydra. We have not seen a ton of Harsh Mentor as of late. Um, it's a two drop that cannot crew Heart of Kieran, which is a bit unfortunate, but it seems strong enough in these matchups that. It's worth the slot. Whirler Virtuoso here from Jerry Thompson. Seven energy available. Passes the turn back to Benjamin Renato. Who uh, has a lot of good cards in hand currently. Yeah, we know about the Hazaret. We know about an Aether Sphere Harvester. We know he just drew a card, which is at least as good as Unlicensed Disintegration. It's a scary place to be for Jerry Thompson. Scrap Heap Scrounger attacks in. What do you like doing here if you're Jerry? Just taking it? I think you just take it. I mean, if you start making Thopters, you're going to be taking a lot of damage due to those Harsh Mentor triggers. And I like this a lot from Benjamin. Benjamin uh, setting his library up so that he's able to empty his hand out as quickly as possible. He's setting himself up to have this Hazard on and ready to go. Jerry Thompson falls to eight. Yeah, and these Whirler Virtuoso activations getting more and more dangerous for Jerry Thompson. He may even have to go ahead and use something like Confiscation Coup on Harsh Mentor. He is, in fact, going to steal the Aether Sphere Harvester. Yeah, I, I think that that is uh, a very reasonable line if you have a way to deal with the Harsh Mentor. And he does have the Glory Bringer. Glory Bringer will attack and exert. Taking down the Harsh Mentor here. 
And suddenly, Jerry looks like he's out of the woods. Benjamin Rano down to 11. Hazaret in hand along with unlicensed disintegration. Yeah, Benjamin now probably kicking himself that he didn't use that unlicensed disintegration on the turn before to uh, get Glorybringer off the table because that harsh mentor was keeping him in such good shape. And without the harsh mentor on the table, just allowing Jerry to simply exert a glory bringer to kill it. It's just a disaster. Hazaret hitting the red zone here for Renato. Jerry's going to make a thopter. Not long for this world. Jumps in front. And every time that glory bringer gets underestimated, is allowed to untap. It seems to spell disaster for the player who allowed it to do so. We saw a glory bringer coming in and drawing cards with the Life Crafters bestiary earlier today. Uh, BDM, who is uh, with us here, says, yeah, glory bringer that draws you a card? It's insane. <laughs> yeah, I mean, glory bringer is, glory bringer is just insane. <laughs> Two more Whirler Virtuosos here for Jerry Thompson. Three now on the battlefield. Eight energy. It's odd because it doesn't even seem like Jerry has, you know, the best attacks in the universe. He's probably getting in with this Harvester at the very least. But All right, so he will uh, give that Harvester lifelink as well. Out of cards in hand, Jerry now playing off the top of the deck. Yeah, but he does have seven points of flying on the battlefield, and Benjamin, no flyers. He has this unlicensed disintegration, but is it too little too late at this point? That's what we have to ask ourselves. Yeah, Benjamin here asking himself the same thing, head in hand, looking at the state of Jerry's team here. Yeah, and I mean, he, Benjamin probably kicking himself that he did not cast the unlicensed disintegration on the glory bringer on that key turn instead choosing to empty out his hand to maximize the power of Hazaret. What do you like doing here for your Benjamin? You know Jerry's out of cards. You've got an unlicensed disintegration in hand. I mean, I think your, your only play is killing the glory bringer. Uh, any other play leaves you dead at this point because, you know, Jerry could simply make another Thopter token. And... Uh, finish things up, but uh, Jerry going to go ahead and here and make some blocks. Great. So he he's not going to have lethal after the uh, glory bringer gets unlicensed disintegration. Thopter token here for Jerry. Once again, chumping in front of Hazaret. We'll take three from the scrounger. Falls to eight. Benjamin passes the turn back over to Jerry. And Benjamin looking to s for a way to steal this game. Remember, the analysis integration will do an additional three damage here, um, which could prove to be the difference if uh, Jerry's trying to lifelink with Ether Sphere Harvester to achieve victory. And look at this, a swing with the team from Jerry T. Glorybringer shooting down that veteran motorist. Down goes the motorist, wow. down goes the inventor. There's a braid and there's the yeah. handshake. Jerry Thompson is through to the finals. Wow, Jerry Thompson on the US national team. This is two different world's competitors. Yes, Both it is. battling on the U.S. national team. That's unbelievably impressive. Jerry Thompson just won a pro tour. Reed Duke gets to play alongside Jerry Thompson. Reed Duke's probably pretty happy about that. Oh, absolutely. Who wouldn't want a team with either of these two guys right now? All right, let's check in here at our other semifinal. Peter Villarubia versus Oliver Tomiko. White-blue approach versus blue-black control. And like we expected... Peter was able to lock up that first game versus Oliver, but now our players have consulted their sideboards and Oliver has probably removed a lot of the dead cards he had against Peter. 
Yeah, from the looks of it, uh, Glint Sleeve Siphoner Jeez. came out of the board here for Oliver Tomiko. And that seems like a great plan against these control decks. Uh, it even seems likely that uh, Villa Rubia sideboarded in such a way that he doesn't really have much in the way of effective cards to fight against a card like Glint Sleeve Siphoner. There's Cast Out here from Peter attempting to deal with one of these siphoners who have dwindled Peter's life total to eight at this point. Why do you like this card out of the board so much for Oliver? Well, especially when he's against other control opponents, it seems like they would be sideboarding out cards that would deal with inexpensive threats. And this card is a great inexpensive threat because it can't be blocked by a single blocker with Menace. And at the same time, it also provides Oliver with a steady stream of card advantage so that he can constantly have the counter magic he needs to fight over big spells. So it's just a perfect card for these types of matchups. It's like a uh, control deck sideboarding in Dark Confidant in a control mirror. Just a, a classic way to victory. All right, and Peter is going to scoop him up right there trying to get back in it with some lifelinking cats, but those glint sleeve siphoners are going to seal the deal for Oliver Tomiko, tying things up here at one game apiece in the semifinals. Yeah, Peter Villarubia, he's going to have to come up with a uh, game three plan that gives him the best possible chance against uh, something like glint sleeve siphoner. Does he have anything in his arsenal, do you think, that he could bring in to deal with a cheap threat like that? Um, I think Regal Crockle is his best plan. And from the looks of it, Peter missed quite a few land drops. And when you're playing a control mirror, missing land drops is often one of the easiest ways to, uh, you know, lose a match. An I update, too, for you here uh, from Brazil, by the way. Their team is formed for the World Magic Cup, and it is formidable. <laughs> All right. So Paulo Vitor Dama de Rosa, the captain for Brazil. We all know and love Paulo, champion for Brazil, Carlos Romao, great guy. Former world champion. And then we have Lucas Esperber, too, was the finalist. A Pro Tour champion from this year. That's right. All three of them Pro Tour champions. That's never happened before. It has never happened before. Brazil will be bringing that team to the World Magic Cup. Pretty cool. So something that's kind of exciting here that just happened Peter Villarubia sideboarded out all of his approach of the second sun. Did he really? He just did. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that happened. So tell me a little bit about that decision. So I assume he's bringing in Torrential Gear Hulks and Regal Caracals and then an extra copy of Getting in the Trials. And, you know, Oliver will have to play the game in such a way that, you know, he can never really tap out once Peter has the, the mana to start going for approaches. Uh, the thing is, though, is that when they haven't cast the first approach, you can be a little more aggressive. So I'm not sure how it's going to work out for Peter. Um, one of the reasons why the blue-white approach deck is so unbelievably favored here is because, you know, game one, the blue-black control deck essentially just can't win. Right. Um, now, Oliver had a great sideboard plan here. The Glint Sleeve Siphoner gave him a, a huge game plan that uh, he didn't have access to in the first game. But uh, here with Peter on the play, he should be very happy with his chances. Oh, he has a Settle the Wreckage in his deck post-board? That's interesting. I played against White Blue Approach online this week and was met with a Settle the Wreckage. <laughs> My wreckage was settled. You, of course, were playing a Vampire deck. Yes! It's a little bit different. Yeah, I, I think uh, sideboarding in the, the <laughs> Settle the Wreckage against the Vampire deck it <laughs> seems, seems much like more common yeah. <laughs> than sideboarding in against blue-black control. Yeah, is he just trying to get Oliver here if he left his siphoners in? I like it. Spice. <laughs> All right, so Peter has kept his opening hand. We'll see if Oliver likes this six. He does. Scries. Puts it on the bottom. All right, we are off to the races here in the final game of our semifinals. Oliver Tomajko versus Peter Villarubia. Yeah, Peter now on the play. Does he have an essence scatter 
or something of the like, or a sensor to deal with a turn two glint sleeve siphoner? We'll have to see. <laughs> all right, turns back over to Oliver. I imagine Oliver has to go for it, right? Yeah, he has one in hand. I see it hiding back there. Funny how these uh, post sideboarded games with these two control decks play out so very differently. There it is, Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Peter, no answer. Wow. Just, oh, wow. Just as a passage turn right back. Could get out of hand here. If Oliver starts drawing extra cards, that Glint Sleeve Siphoner, you can't love Peter's chances in this game. Siphoner gets in 4 2. Search for Ascanta. No good here. But uh, like you said, the Siphoner, super important in this post -side sideboarded match. Ipnu Rivulet for Peter passes back. Um, interesting choice there for Peter. He could have cast Glimmer of Genius during his main phase there, which seems uh, like it could have been a, a safe play. Uh, there, are, there are no spell pierces in Oliver 75, so you know he, he's pretty much positive he's going to resolve that glimmer there, and you know going for the glimmer on Oliver's end step, I think Oliver has a lot of different action that he could try to set up with that. A second glint sleeve siphoner here for Oliver. And it's good, and here's the glimmer. Yeah, now I imagine Peter's just going to keep both of those lands on the top of his library. Yep. Decides to draw them. All right, we'll see if <laughs> Oliver is going to get hit with a settle the wreckage here. <laughs> that I wouldn't see coming if I was him, but... Yeah, I, I would not have seen it coming either. Hieroglyphic Illumination will draw him a card at the end of the turn. It was blue. Was it a counterspell that, that can hit settle the wreckage? I don't know. I, know. I think I saw an, like an essence scatter in Oliver's hand and a search. Maybe there's a disallow. All right, here they come. Settle the wreckage. Can he do anything about it? And he cannot. Wow. Both of the Glint Sleeve Siphoners into exile for Oliver Tomajko. He does, however, get to search his library for a couple lands. Yes. And How important that is that right here? Very, 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 very important. <laughs> <laughs> How I many berries was that? I, I, I should have included a few more. Okay, okay. All right, just sure, to be sure, safe. Sure. Because the thing is, this is a control mirror. Like one of the biggest ways you win a control mirror is by having more lands than your opponent. Oliver just got to trade in both those Glint Sleeve Siphoners, one of which already drew him multiple cards. Sure for multiple lands. Like, both of those were rampant growths, essentially. Even after Peter spent a card and a turn dealing with them. And the search for Ascanta now in play for Oliver as well. Yeah, and that search was you know, able to be resolved because the Settle the Wreckage was cast. The thing is that Peter didn't have much of an option otherwise. Like, in terms of ways to deal with a card like Glint Sleeve Siphoner, like, that's why it's such a good right. sideboard plan from Oliver. We haven't seen this sideboard plan much out of blue black, and I think Oliver's onto something with this. All right, so Peter does have a Gear Hulk in hand. Field of Ruin for Oliver. Here he's going to attempt a Gear Hulk. Yeah, and it's unlikely that's going to resolve no. because with, with what Oliver didn't have in his hand in the way of cards like Negate or Dissipate, I mean, he, he has to have something, right? So it's post-board, so Essence Scatter almost assuredly in Oliver's hand. He could even have had something like Double Sensor. Looks like Peter is holding on to a couple of lands, a pull from tomorrow, and a Disallow. Oliver draws a Gear Hulk of his own. Scries to the top. We will transform 
into the sunken rune. Pull from tomorrow from Peter. And let's see, will Oliver go for yeah. a disallow on this? I imagine you, you have to to some degree, right? So it's, it's, he's getting Absolutely. four cards deep. Disallow followed by a negate. Does Oliver want to fight? He could torrential gear hulk. And there it is. Sensor says no way to that pull from tomorrow. And all Peter has left is a disallow. Yeah. So it looks like Oliver to Maiko in a matchup that, you know, I, I have heard from countless people and would just assume on paper is nearly unwinnable for Blue Black Control. He found the sideboard plan to win a matchup like this. And that's pretty impressive. So Glint Sleeve Siphoner, for those watching who play Blue Black Control, this card should be in your sideboard. It looked very impressive, this match. Cast out here from Peter on the Gear Hulk. But uh, Oliver with just a lot of tools at his disposal now. Oliver actually lost to Peter in the Swiss. Oh, really? In two quick games. As quick as they can go in this matchup for what it's worth. But there was more than 20 minutes left on the clock, and Peter had won this matchup. So I count that as quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We had an attempted cast out and a fight, and the Gear Hulk came out on top. Keep, keep swinging in hitting Peter's life total. And Oliver able to repeatedly activate this as Kanta here. Duress. Peter says, all I've got is this land. Glimmer of Genius was the draw. Both on the bottom. What can he find? Just some more lands. <laughs> Yeah, and Oliver doesn't have him dead quite yet. Only putting Peter down to one, but... Field of Ruin here from Peter. Getting sacrificed. Yep. Time to deal with... Escanta. Ooh. And that disallow. Nice. <laughs> from Oliver, maybe the negate. It's going to be a, a really tough road to toe. All right, well, Ascanta is down, but this match is all but sewn up here for Oliver Tomachko. And I don't think Peter can do much at this point. With Essence Scatters and the Gates in Oliver's hand, we know Peter has nothing but lands. And cycle the sensor, but at this point, he's just spinning the wheels. Another settle the wreckage. <laughs> it's not completely out of the question, though, for him to think that Oliver could just not counter this card here and try to counter something different. But he does, and the game ends. And there is a handshake. We can hear applause coming from the feature match area. Oliver Tomiko heads to the finals here at U.S. Nationals. And that's what we'll be bringing to you coming up next after these messages. <laughs> 